welcome back everybody. I am the Executioner and today we're going to be talking about the Book of Boba Fett. So the Book of Boba Fett is a series out on Disney+. Plus. It is about uh, Boba Fett, how he survived the Sarlacc pit, and how he's building his criminal empire. So this series, I want to start out with the good. Because the good is the actor who plays Boba Fett, Tamora, I believe is actually pretty good as Boba Fett. A lot of people don't like him because he was in Attack of the Clones, obviously, as Django. But I think that he, he actually is a good follow-up uh, for uh, Wintergreen. I believe this is named the original Boba Fett. I think he actually is a good, uh, for canon's sake, I think he's definitely a good voice to voice Boba Fett. He's been doing this since... Uh, 2002, I believe. He did the re-re-releases a long time ago. Personally, I think they shouldn't have been changed, but for the sake of continuity, I guess that's why it had to be changed. But what I would say is I'd much rather have an option to hear uh, Wintergreen's voice or Tamro's voice via a uh, menu setting, but I digress. But the show's pretty good. I've watched uh, four episodes so far, and I will say that the first episode actually started out pretty good. I think that the whole Sand People plot was a great way to to introduce Boba, how he's changed, and how he's going through this struggle to find out who he actually is. Because, spoiler alert, he gets adopted by the tribe in episode, uh, uh, towards the latter end of episode one, but, uh, episode two more to be precise, but, but basically the first part's pretty good. I like how it starts out where you see Boba Fett, uh, he's in the Sarlacc pit and he's trying to escape the Sarlacc pit. So he goes over to a stormtrooper, rips his air out. He obviously needs air or I think the chemical was flammable. Uh, probably ox, uh, that's meant to make the flames go whatever, but I liked it. It was very short, which I didn't kind of like, but I could see why they did it for time, since it's more of a streaming show. What I especially like about the scene is kind of like the ingenuity of it, where he takes this chemical, uh, he takes the air out of it. I think he needs air to breathe up uh, in there, obviously, but he uses it also as kind of like an oxidizer to make the flames bigger, and he climbs out of the uh, Sarlacc pit. Now, Jawas raid his armor, and that's why he has to get it in, spoiler alert, in The Mandalorian. So I think it ties things pretty good together. Now, episode one, pretty great. He's establishing his criminal empire, uh, getting things in order. And I think people are critiquing it more because they don't think that's what Boba Fett is. He's very nice, but uh, there's a Generation Tech video that did a video about this. Uh, where him acting nice is actually kind of strategic in a way. You're killing people with kindness as opposed to Jabba's method, where Jabba was just very strong-armed. Now, it's not like uh, Bib Fortuna, where Bib Fortuna was very weak, and that's why he lost control of things when Boba shot him in the head, obviously. But I like it. I, I like it so far. So the second one, I loved. I just loved the Lawrence of Arabia feel of it all. I absolutely loved it. The whole train scene was great. I think it was filmed very well, has great action, great suspense, and it really illustrates Boba like kind of joining this tribe and having kind of like an almost second life, if you will. But episode three was just, before we get to episode three, though, I will say that the uh, ending, spoiler alert, uh, where they kill off the sand people. That's like episode two, episode three, towards the beginning. Uh, I didn't like that. I think you could have gone a couple extra episodes, filled out that plot line of with the Pike Syndicate, and then have them killed by the, uh, the riders. But I think because it's only one season and there's only seven episodes, they decided to focus their time somewhere else, which I'm not going to blame them. They obviously have a limited budget, but episode three, on the other hand, it started out good, but I really did not like the cyber gang. You know, that's what they're being called. And some people are throwing up the TMNT meme. We'll be there. But yeah, I really think they were out of place. Now, are they out of place more than, let's say, the Ewok show during the 80s? I wouldn't necessarily say that, but I think that they could have been modified in such a way, the character's designs, where it was more Tatooine, Mad Max type thing, you know, droid parts from the Clone Wars, 
but everything was very just clean. And that was the problem. They were riding on something that looked like a Vespa. And I think that was more to sell toys and all that other stuff. But I think that it's not necessarily a bad idea. Droid, uh, people being modified with droid parts, etc. But that look would, and I think this goes with Star Wars Fury as well. He did a review of this. But it would more fit on Coruscant where that's more cyberpunky. But them trying to throw cyberpunk into Tatooine... I don't really think that worked. On the other hand, the chase scene, it, it wasn't as bad. It was going five miles per hour, sure. But the ending where he kind of uh, gets into some mounts, that, that was a good joke. But I think the thing they're lacking here is very much suspense and action pacing in this episode. Where they start out with, they uh, start out with Chrysanta uh, attacking uh, Boba. That whole defense attack thing, I didn't buy it because, I mean, a Wookiee can kill a Trandoshan pretty easy. So that was kind of some plot armor if you think about it. But it's just, the styling was a little bit off with episode 3. On the other hand, episode 4 was actually pretty good. Uh, it was basically telling how we got Slave One back. Now it's Fire Spray. Honestly, I don't get the change behind the name. Slave One isn't really indicative of uh, Intibum slavery, but, you know, Disney. But it was good. How, how he needs Master Assassin Fennec Shand. And I think that is very good. Now, could you argue that should have been done at the beginning of the show? Yes. Maybe that would have been a better replacement for episode three. But I think the show so far is great. It's kind of mixed, but three episodes to go until the series wraps up season one. I think it's pretty good so far. So I would say that Book of Boba Fett is not a bad show. It's just that it falls into some areas where you expect Disney to go. Mandalorian, on the other hand, I think it's an amazing show all the way through. But Book of Boba Fett is definitely mixed, kind of, but it's not that bad. It's not that bad. It's definitely interesting when you get into it with the Tusken Raider story that was cut short pretty much. But I think everything else, definitely an amazing show. And I think that if they can correct some of the issues going forward, this definitely is a runner up for The Mandalorian. So anyways, guys, hope you liked the video. Please subscribe and remember, pawn shot first.